Let's get going. going. Hi guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here. We're up at area of Storm Mountain called Cedar Park. Park. Um, yeah, this is a lightning strike. This house is detached from the grid completely. Propane, heated, and solar ran, but then a uh, Generac at battery backups, and then it also has a standby generator. You can twist lock plug at 7kW. Um, and so basically I want to show you real quick when the lightning hit, this customer called me, um, just, oh gosh, at the begin middle of the week, it was really hard to get through the schedule to get up here. We, luckily someone canceled. So we were able to get up here, but I want to show you this real quick. Lightning hit on the other side of the house. This house is probably about uh, 1800 to 2000 square foot, but it, it came through the outlet and blew through with that nail and maybe enough energy to ground out. Maybe it went up and through, but anyways, it blew out the siding, this plastic siding. I'll come around here, I'll show you some more. So this is where the customer found that it hit. Um, it looks like it shredded off, uh, maybe hit right here. He had a little windmill and then it, the energy came through here, sparked. And then this thing probably wasn't grounded too well. Anywho, it hit here, came down. You can see it's got it on a heater totter. Um, how much energy did that draw or produce? 400 watts, that little one. They don't watts. make them anymore. 400 watts, okay. So anyways, that came down. He uses this guy wire to pull it to, to service it. And then the wires came in right here to go inside. Um, it wasn't grounded, so today you can see right here. You can bring that over here. We grounded this. He might just cut off these posts and get rid of it, he said. But anyways, we bonded it here. And then came in over here to the ground rod, which was just for the generator. But then we grounded it, sanded this down, and then bonded the generator and then the wire going into the house this way through that LB and then jumpered it because this is a separately dry system. So none of this was done for grounding except for just this green wire. And now all that bonded, we also went up here and bonded the gas valve to the propane. So that comes down to his tank behind you. I'm going to show them the tank over here, which today I think they have to be like 50 to 70 feet away from the house, not, not 18 to 20. Um, yeah, so we'll go in here. So basically, we had to check if the feeder wire, am I still filming? Yeah. Okay, if the feeder wire was grounded out, to the neutral and melted in the conduit. Um, so that gen rack, I'm still filming. Yeah. Yeah, it comes into here to the contactor. When it senses that the solar goes out and the well pump is the only 240 right here, needs more water. The, there's power that goes down to the well pump out of that 240 and then there's a float switch that kicks on and off. We think possibly the float switch got damaged um, and so we can't get the well to kick on to bring into the cistern then to its pressure tank. And if I have enough time I'll run down and show you. But anyways this side over here is fed on a 110 leg that goes up to this inverter and none of these were really identified so i identified all the wires i didn't wire this this was done back in the 90s interesting how this thhn does not complete itself through flex they just put it in the wall and drywalled but that's how they did it back then i don't know how it passed inspection because we always have to terminate with flex but anyway, so when this finally, we, this was running, the solar guy came out and replaced the inverter, checked over. None of these switches tripped, even this main breaker, 175 amp. 
And so this is fed down here with a battery backup. And he has 12 batteries in here. And they're 6 volt. And they're in series. And 6 times 12 is 72 volts. So he has 9 solar panels up on the roof as an average of about 205 to 250 watts a panel. But he has 2 legs or 2 arrays coming down. And what he told me in the 90s is that's enough to have up to 2,000 watts, which is about 166, uh, 12 divided by 2,000 watts, about 166 volt amperes uh, per battery. So he's thinking if he runs minimal, it's four or five days of, of energy here if the solar was not actually trickle charging these batteries. So anyways, the, the windmill came in here and that then went over to where it was cut off here and then probably over over, in that corner. over this corner here. So it looks like he was trying to energize all of the batteries in and out with the windmill, but there was no disconnect or fusible disconnect out there for the windmill coming in. So when that energy hit, I'm so surprised that the batteries didn't explode. Um, other than it had really good grounding then. Okay, so yeah, of course you can't ground your plastic batteries, but the whole system was grounded fairly well, and I'll show you that. Um, but he also has a temperature stat here that reads if, if this whole box gets hot. And it's going to be all of these. Oh, yeah, there it is, that temperature stat. Yep. And so if these batteries get too hot because the water gets too low, then this will tell him to shut off charging which is pretty fancy. I've never heard of that. And then these guys is pretty sweet. He figured this out. These have three legs right here where he just takes a pump and pumps water in, and then there's floats. So he doesn't have to open each and every. That's, that's 36 little caps that you have to take open to feed each cell to water them. These are made by Trojan, and it's an L16RE-B. Um, and so anyways, all of this, he's able to pump water by feeding these in series and they all stayed filled with distilled water. Do you have to boil that water? Not distilled when you buy it. Not when you buy it that way. Am I still filming? Oh, very yeah. good. Okay. I'm doing good on minutes. Okay. Cause otherwise I can't download my minutes. So yeah, you can see how that windmill was finally cut off. There's no fusible disconnect out there. It should have had a fuse. It wasn't grounded properly. But where it hit was outside over here. Where the lightning hit was outside over here. I wonder if something on the roof got hit, but his, your roof's metal. So the solar panels didn't get damaged. But it, it, when we grounded as 250.53, 250.64, and also 0725, I think, is emergency systems. And then you also have um, uh, where it talks about your separately drive systems. And so... If the generator is an emergency system, that has to be bonded so that this neutral is no different in here. Your main, this is kind of your main panel, but your main disconnect is outside rated at 60 amp off that 14 kW generator. Well, that 14,000 kilowatt generator probably could do closer up to 100 amp, but they only ran in six gauge wire back in the day. Now this coming out of the contactor is some number fours, but the weakest link here is this three quarter. So if they had just ran maybe a one inch and some number fours or maybe an inch and a quarter flex and put that in with um, some number ones, it, he could have been closer to 100 amp off, maybe off that 14 kW generator. But his max breaker out there is 60 amp. So that also protects that wire coming in. Now out of this, this leg here on the 110 is it threw me for a loop that maybe could be a 50 amp but the, this feeds the inverter and that 110 goes into the inverter here and that inverter of course is inverting that way but the point being is that we labeled all these wires uh, even the the neutral for the inverter in and the inverter out with white and blue versus white and yellow and then I put some purple tape so I can identify easier over here. None of this was done. It was very confusing to figure out. But once that was all done, um, we checked these eddy base, these R fuses up here. They're FRNs, probably slow blow, 10 amps. Who knows? 
5 amp. And so those we checked just to make sure all that was working. Um, and then this is your automatic transfer switch, which is transferring your energy once it senses it goes down that it's going to transfer and bring from the if the solar goes down the generator kicks on but if the if the well if, if the float switch is low in the tank it's supposed to send energy downstairs to the um cistern and then kick that on and then the 240 for the generator will kick on the gen rack because that's the only 240 in the house right here to fill the wellhead and so it goes down at about comes in around 240, 238, and then by the time it gets downstairs, it's like 234, so there's a bit of a voltage drop. But then once it goes into one of those, um, a lot of you well guys know, and I apologize if I say it wrong, but it's like a, a, a little buck boost. It goes up to 463 with a capacitor. So um, we checked to make sure the microfarads and the capacitor was at 164 to 172. It appears to me it's fine. So I'm thinking the weakest link that might have broke here is maybe that float switch. Those float switches in there were actually 240 volt rated. There is no ground, right? So when you go on the line side of the float switch, it's going to be fairly strong at 118, 117. Um, but then on the back side, it was only 60 volts. So really, if that float switch and the contactor, he's got three of them. There's a low, a medium, and a high. So if we have enough time, let's go down there real quick. Um, how much time do I have on there? Is it still going? 11.38. Yeah, I know if I get to 15 minutes, it's so hard to download. Let's go down real quick. So see, right where this windmill came in, there should have been power coming in to a feasible disconnect. If he had 400 watts and you divide that out at 240, Geez, even a 10 amp fuse, but I think little fuse goes around 15 amps first. But this was grounded. It was grounded, but non-fused. Yes. So if it was fused, maybe it wouldn't have blown out the inverter. But anyway, so if we go down this way. Here's where lightning also hit. This is why I don't like plastic siding with metal trim. It might have been because of this energy, the grounding of this cement. Whoa. Um, but right here, let me see that phone. Yep, it, it arced. Okay, so now that's grounded this way. Let's go downstairs. This is a sump pump, which did not get affected. This is just a normal plastic float. This one coming over, are we still filming? Yeah. Good. Okay, so this right here, we couldn't tell if it was working. And then we were able to get this, con this cap off for the pressure switch. And we were able to just push the contact to get these cisterns to fill. Okay, and that is a 120 volt pump, but it does draw, um, it's a half horsepower, has 3,550, uh, 3,450 RPM, and it is uh, a frame 56J, but it does take about almost 12 amps. That's why the light's dimmed. But basically what happens is these two need to be full to be satisfied as they're pulling water upstairs to shower and do laundry and dishes. And this thing will kick on. Well, that contact got stuck on us. Once we filled that, this water tank drained from here to here. But the float switch, let's go up here. I'll take my phone. I'm just going to dump it in the water. Oh, we're still filming. Good. The float switch, there's three of them. Okay. There's a low and a medium to turn off and then a high and then an alarm in okay, case so it keeps going. Well, that's what we can't get to kick on over here. And power came in here with this. I've never seen an Eddie Bay's double fuse, single switch, double throw SSU switch, but it was cracked on the back. So the voltage wasn't coming through right. So I put this single pole double throw by Hubble 20 amp rated in at 240 volt or 300 volt, but it goes to 235. And then it comes into here. And then there's a little solenoid 
that's supposed to click once this float switch right here goes backwards. And this float switch goes into that tank and drops in. Well, that's what's supposed to trigger to turn the other leg to come into this Franklin electric box. Then that's where the capacitor is and it fills that and tries to get 463 pushing it out. And that's your load out, right? Your wires out going to your well pump and then you're 490 feet deep. 490, 500 feet deep. It's pretty deep. And then this is where the water's supposed to come in and up. Make sure this valve was on. Water pumps in, dumps into the tank. And then as it pulls right here, it sucks through that pump and goes into your cistern. Pressure tanks. Pressure tanks, thank you. And so right here, this is where our, our link is that we think when water lightning hit, you got to keep in mind when lightning hits, it looks for your source. It looks it looks for uh, earth. And when you're going 493 feet deep, when it's going to be some kind of cast iron steel conduit or whatever pipe going down. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm slaughtering this, if you're a well guy. But that's what's going to ground out. So my gut is, is maybe the motors are bad, but I did put my meter on it up at the panel. But it's really hard to read through these contacts if this other contact is not shut. You're over 16 minutes now. Okay, guys, anyways, I got a cruise. So again, this is a, a detached, off the grid, generated house, but the generator only kicks on if the solar's not working and the generator only kicks on if you need 240 for the well. Otherwise, the whole house is running on 110, which means everything in the house has propane fed for, um, I guess for his hot water heaters, 110 as well. No, it's uh, no propane. Oh, it's propane. Okay, so you just he just has an igniter. He's got an electric. He's got a gas a propane range with the um, um, the uh, orifices that were changed out from LP to get to propane. Yes. Um, so everything in the house is 110. It's very much like a 30 amp rated RV. Um, nice. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Have a good day. It's got a 24 cubic foot refrigerator. Works great.